Hello again, and uh, welcome to the second Oasis Free webinar. Um, my name is Norbert Kovac, and I'm one of the BDMs at Oasis looking after our geotechnical sales. Um, just a few general notes before we start. Um, we will do a short recap on our last webinar, uh, just for the benefit of those uh, engineers who couldn't attend this one. Um, we will, you will be muted at the beginning. However, um, we do have the chat active, so if you have any questions, you can just put this into the chat and we will um, discuss these at the end of the webinar. And um, regarding our today's presenters, um, so we have our geote geotechnical product manager, Raul Perulero Serrano, and our application specialist, Cicira Pereira. And with that, I will hand over to Cicira. Thanks, Norbert. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes. OK. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar today. I am Shishira, Application Specialist for the OASIS Geotechnical Suite of Software. This will be a continuation to the webinar we had on the 4th of May on our flexible retaining wall analysis software, the OASIS FRU. In today's webinar, First, we will be looking at a small recap of the previous FRU webinar in which the basics of FRU were explained, as well as how to create and analyze a model. Then at some special modeling techniques and features available in FRU, which would be useful for pra practicing ge geotechnical engineers, some tips and tricks, and finally the COM interface available in FRU. So to brush up the basics, FRU is a software which can analyze embedded retaining walls over the complete construction sequence. It can carry out stability checks for cantilever and propped walls. FRU can also carry out earth and water pressure calculations at every stage. It can calculate shear forces, bending moments, displacements, etc. It's good to know that FRU is suitable for analyzing different types of walls like the sheet pile, secant, contiguous, or diaphragm walls. The user can choose the type of wall by giving appropriate values of stiffness as input through the gateway in FRU. Now in FRU, the wall is modeled as a series of elastic beam elements joined at the nodes. The lowest node is either at the base of the wall or at a prescribed rigid base in the ground beneath the wall. This is usually the level at which we expect to encounter rock or very hard formation. We need to be very careful while specifying the depth of this rigid base. If we choose a very deep base, then the program might estimate high displacements for the wall. And if the, uh, the selected depth is too shallow, then the results may not be realistic. The soil to either side of the wall is connected to it by springs. It is assumed that only horizontal forces are transmitted. There is also a vertical rigid boundary set to a reasonably far distance away. However, setting this distance appropriately is very important as we will see a bit later when we discuss how to model shaft excavations in flow. To build a model in FRU, you need to provide some specific inputs. Therefore, it would be helpful if you gather all the information required, like the soil strength and stiffness, short term and long term. What are the type of soil that you will encounter at site and what are the stiffnesses? The groundwater profile, if available, at, uh, what is the level of groundwater that you expect and what are the water pressures? The wall stiffnesses, the short term and the long term, what type of wall are you using? The support stiffnesses, whether you will be using props, anchors, berms, or slabs. Also the surcharges and applied loads. And it's important that you plan the geometry of your problem beforehand. The input wizard helps you to generate construction stages and other project specific features for the model. And once the analysis is done, graphical as well as tabular outputs are available in FRU. You can export the results in CSV format and use it for further analysis in Excel or other programs. You can also print the results in PDF for using in reports, presentations, etc. You can print out stage by stage results or an envelope of results. 
So that was a quick recall of all that was discussed in the first part of our previous webinar. Now I move on to some of the advanced modeling techniques and some very useful features in FRU. We shall discuss some of these in detail, while others shall be part of later webinars. However, detailed theory and descriptions are available in the manual, and if you need any help or guidance, please do contact us. The effects that can be modeled in FRU include props and struts, which were demonstrated by Raul in the previous webinar. Also wall relaxation and creep, where you will adjust the stiffness accordingly. Undrained drain transition, which includes the pore water pressure adjustment as the case may be. Sloping ground behind the wall and berms in front of the wall. Modeling shafts, integral bridge analysis, seismic or cyclic loading. We shall also be have a brief look at some other useful features like batch testing and using of partial factors for analysis. Let us now see how undrained drained analysis is carried out in FRU. Previously, there was a time consuming sequence of activities to be followed for modeling drained undrained analysis. Was to initialize stresses with drained materials, switch to undrained soils, model the sequence, then apply estimated undrained pore pressure profile to the undrained materials, then switch to drained parameters and switch to long term pore pressures. But now, this was a lengthy and cumbersome procedure. Now, FRU can be used to easily calculate undrained pore pressures at each construction stage. This feature is available in the material properties table and is activated by specifying for an undrained material another drained material zone from which effective stress parameters are to be taken. A shape factor controls the shape of the permitted effective stress path for undrained behavior. The default value is one, which limits the effective stress to be within the more Coulomb failure envelope, but it can optionally be changed to zero, representing the modified Camp Clay envelope or any value in between. <clears throat> this screenshot shows the input values for drained and drained modeling in FRU. You can notice that the shape factor here is set at one to choose the more Coulomb envelope and that the undrained material five is based on the properties of drain material two, whereas the, the properties of material number six is based on the property of material number four. Geotechnical engineers often encounter sloping ground behind retaining walls. The sloping ground behind the wall can be modeled in FRU as a surcharge acting at the top of the wall. That is a UDL offset at a distance away. With a stepped strip load. But this is not enough to model it completely. We need to combine it with a lateral force. Sorry, lateral force acting at the top of the wall. These forces have to be calculated and applied based on the site conditions to model effectively the wedge force which is acting on the wall from the sloping ground. Moving on to modeling of berms. In FRU, a berm is modeled similar to a uniform layer of soil as the behavior is the same in the elastic phase. The horizontal forces at the wall are transferred downwards by shear. In the analysis, the user should propose modified values of KP, KPC and C from which passive pressures within the berm are calculated. At the level of the base of the berm, a negative UDL surcharge is applied at the base. At the same level, a positive strip surcharge is also applied representing the berm itself. So where the berm is not there in this region, the negative surcharge will act alone. This is a simplified method, but a more rigorous method is also available. Both are described in detail in the manual. Please do go through this while modeling berms. FRU also facilitates analysis of plane strain excavation. That's not that is infinitely long trenches or shafts, which is an axisymmetric case. 
Now, if you consider a soil cylinder of soil with radius A inside a circular excavation, assuming that the Young's modulus is not varying with depth and it is an excavation of large depth, the soil stiffness inside the circular excavation and outside can be calculated. Outside and inside can be calculated. For this, the displacements for a cylinder and a block are equated and the distance of the rigid boundary T is calculated. This is then applied to the analysis. Details are available in the manual. Please go through it carefully while using this modeling technique. It's also worth mentioning that the axisymmetric analysis results need to be validated by the FE analysis. Now let us move on to integral bridge analysis available in FRU. The integral bridge analysis in FRU is based on PD66941, a published document by BSI. In this method, strut loads representing the expansion and contraction of the bridges are applied in consecutive stages and new stages corresponding to deck contraction in winter and deck expansion in summer are added. The FRU method is an iterative process based on the analysis procedure outlined in PD66941-2011. Sorry, I'll just demonstrate this now with a FRU example. Is my screen visible, please? <clears throat> yes, yeah. OK. So there are uh, four stages, as we can see. Uh, the first uh, two stages are created in the usual way. It's the initial condition and the installation of the wall. Uh, we can also see the input. I'll, I can dock the input uh, view here. Uh, that is a tip in through. So whatever stages we want to see, we can see on the right side or on the left side. You can dock it anywhere you need. The after the second stage, first stage after the st installation of the wall, uh, we have input uh, three stages, which is for the expansion and contraction. So for stage zero and stage one, we will not run the integral bridge analysis. Uh, bridge uh, analysis. Uh, the integral bridge analysis will be run from stage two onwards. So in the analysis method, we have to, we, there is an option to check the perform integral bridge calculation. So we will click it on and then apply. And then in the integral bridge analysis data, we have to input all the required details. This will include also a strut, which is input here with a pre-stress pre value. Uh, this strut will on, only be used for uh, activated only during the integral bridge analysis, and there is hence no need to, sub, to specify the stage in or stage out for this stress. So once we analyze, it is a quick process because Fru has automated the process. And after the analysis, we can see the tabular output as well as the graphical output. So in the tabular output, we can see the detailed results as well as the results envelope. Graphical output is also available for each stage. Now, if we get back to the presentation. That was the integral bridge analysis. Uh, the next one would be the batch analysis, which is available in FRU. Um, I had already explained about this in the previous webinar, but I will demonstrate this with a FRU file now for better understanding. I'll just open up uh, the FRU file, which we had uh, created during our previous uh, webinar. Here the material details are all entered. In our specification pane, we know when we do the automatic analysis, already the nodes are calculated, and in the stability check, 
there is a lowest toe level which we can use for the further soil structure interaction that interaction analysis. But in case we need to study a little bit more about the toe levels and we need to analyze some different toe levels for any uh, reason uh, for more analysis for for more understanding of what the conditions are. Uh, in that case, we can do. This or we can uh, conduct this option. It is we will keep the node generation in automatic and we will click the override calculated toe level. There you have to specify which from which toe level to which toe level you need to analyze. Say for example, we want to analyze from 20 to 32. Then another value we should give is the required number of intervals. So how many levels do you want to check between 20 and 32? Say for example, you are giving 10. So when we apply. Pro is telling you that it will delete the existing nodes and will create new ones. We'll give OK. So now the program is telling you that it is now going to generate multiple fro files with different toe depths. It's showing that there are 11 files created. So now if we go to the folder and checks, we can see that there are 11 fro files with different toe depths. Now this can be used uh, for it can be the result can be exported and analyzed separately or as a batch. To analyze the files as a batch, batch analysis can be done through uh, the COM interface. Let me just get back to the presentation again. Fro facilitates the use of partial factors in ULS analysis. Partial factors can be applied to British Standard, Syria codes, ASHTO, etc. Many of these values are available as built in in Fro. Uh, however, the user may also input custom factors if none of these are applicable to them. After analysis, you can compare the results with unfactored analysis also. For better understanding, I will now demonstrate on a FRU file. So we will use the same file that we had used before and here. In the specification uh, pane, we have the option for choosing the partial factors. If you click here, you can see that there are four options here which are built in into FRU. Uh, we can also use none and then enter your own values. Now today we will see the Eurocode 7 uh, factors. I'm going to check this click uh, this box uh, because I want to compare the factored analysis and the unfactored analysis. If I apply, OK, the nodes will again be generated. That's fine. Now if you look at Eurocode 7, the partial factors, the table is small, so I can make it big like this. It is by pressing the down the control button and scroll the, and the uh, scrolling on the mouse. Um, so as I said, UK National Annex for Eurocode 7, partial factors are available in FRU. In the specification menu, we have already selected our relevant choice. Now both combinations of Eurocode, uh, design approach one combination one and design approach one combination two are analyzed by default. Uh, if you do not want both to be analyzed, you can also select here yes or no based on your preferences. Now if you run the analysis. Sorry for that. I just. OK, it's selected. I will analyze. After running the analysis, we can see that there are three sets of results available. The unfactored SLS one, the design approach one combination one and design approach one combination two. User can switch between them.
if we look at the full set of results, it's mentioned that the bending moment and the shear force are uh, multiplied by the partial factor for the effect of actions. You can see it here, this mentioned here. Also, the envelope of results are available at the bottom of the results. You can see the envelope of results here. Now, if you go to the graphical output mode, it is available for each stage of our construction. In the graphical output mode, you can compare two sets of results. I'll just put the total pressure off. The bending moment is there. And if you need to uh, uh, see what is it to compare two sets of results, you can select the SLS mode done factored one here and the factored uh, DA1 combination one here. And if you want to see both together, you can click this box so that you can see both results together and you can compare them. The program will plot now the see the two results. The first set is represented by a solid line and the other set is by the dotted line. Hope that's clear. Going back to the presentation again. Okay, the partial factors we have seen. Uh, now to summarize the shortcuts and tips that we have already seen. We know that the new FRU has got a ribbon menu, which is user friendly. And the property panes and uh, windows which can be docked, float, floated on screen or minimized to the edge of the screen. And in the input tables, if you use equals in a cell, it can copy the cell above. And if you use equals equals in a cell, then it copies all the values in the row above. You can click on any uh, right click on the tables or in the uh, in any of the panes for different options and you can adjust the table size as I showed you and also you can copy and paste values to the table from Excel. So that brings us to the end of my part of the presentation and I now invite Raul to continue with the webinar. Many thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Cecilia. So I'll, yeah, I'll just, allow me just to pinch the screen and I'll just share the presentation starting from here. Right, so thank you everyone for joining us today. So uh, after that recap and then looking at some of the advanced features uh, from, from FRU, it's turn for me to uh, just the, the dive into some, a bit of an introduction of what's the COMI interface, uh, uh, particularly speaking uh, uh, with FRU. Uh, it's something available across the Geo Suite, and also a bit on, on touching a bit as well on, on the JSON file format, which is supported um, again in, through through the geotechnical suite of Oasis. So first of all, uh, what's COM? So it, it's it's not a new concept or method, and it was originally uh, developed by Microsoft in the early 90s. In simple terms, it's a way of uh, speaking or giving instructions to the computer, and that includes software, uh, by translating and enabling communication between different scripting and coding languages. Uh, typically, it does consist of an inventory of functions and allows the user to undertake specific tasks. Uh, but most importantly, the motivation for using it, uh, it lies in the fact that the COM functions are uh, the fundamental blocks that allow creating design and analysis workflows. Right, so the COMI interface uh, allows the creation of data uh, objects uh, that uh, allow external programs to pass information and instructions to and from through. And uh, to that effect, the COM objects can be used by many other programs. Uh, so you might have some skills on, uh, if you use Excel, for example, is use Visual Basic. You can use it, for example, from MATLAB. And uh, today's example I'm going to be running a, um, a bit later is, is used with using Python. And the information on how to use the COM interface from Excel and Python uh, for with with it for FRU, and the list of the COM functions that are declared and available in FRU uh, can be found uh, within your installation folder uh, under the uh, samples uh, particular folder. And the sample files that demonstrate the use of COM interface are also provided uh, in that uh, in that same folder. 
And the com interface functions and how to use them are described also within the available documentation that can be found in uh, the help file info, which I'm going to be showing shortly. And the uh, declared and available functions are described along with the input, uh, that is the parameters or arguments that are required to, to run a particular function. So we, without further ado, I'm just going to show this diagram in here, how we're going to get there. So allow me to open through. So you just go to, we are using uh, version uh, 20 build 10. So I'm just going to pinch uh, any of, of the available files that I've got. And if you go to your top right, I'm just going to highlight it up there. So the little uh, blue icon, uh, there's uh, the upper part is through help. Just click on that and then bring it back to our screen. And in here under the programming interface section, uh, you've got a bit more explanation of uh, where, where you can find uh, those functions, uh, how to, uh, for 32-bit uh, versions of Excel, how you need to do the process of, of recalling the library of functions uh, within, and then how to call uh, those objects that we just commented earlier, and then also the same process within Python. And this is the whole list of um, com functions that are the, uh, detailed in here. And for example, let's pick up uh, one, a couple of the top. Uh, so the open and anal analyze in there. So it tells us exactly what we need to do uh, to summon uh, those uh, functionalities and then also how to run them. So I'm just going to close that and go back to the presentation. So, uh, as I as I've mentioned, uh, those couple of examples. So if, let's look at it a bit more in detail. So the the the, the open function uh, we we need first of all, so we can uh, access a target file that already exists in our system, and the the string uh, s path name in there basically is our our queue to tell uh, uh, to tell through uh, where where is stored that target file that we need to open and basically the output uh, is is a number an integer and that uh, value if it's zero if it's been successful or minus one if it's been unsuccessful in in finding that uh, particular file and then analyzing is another ba basic function that exists uh, in the in the declared um, list because uh, you need that for running your model so it's uh, pretty essential and what it does it requires uh, an integer so uh, a numerical value um, that um, that requests uh, up to what stage uh, we want to run our analysis for example if we are in testing phase for example we might not run, want to run uh, the 20 stages that we've got already uh, set up in our model. So we just want to take uh, things one at a time and make sure we, we, we are happy with our results. So say that uh, our, our model that we're going to be looking at uh, shortly, it takes uh, it takes a, a total uh, of 12 stages and it, it's uh, integer and it's a zero base. So our first stage is, uh, is zero. So being a total of 11 stage, uh, 12 stages, so our last stage is number 11. And then just uh, a bit of information in here. So the supported, uh, when, when we are printing outputs uh, from, from through, uh, the supported table file formats that uh, currently are there are CSV, so comma separated, uh, TXT, rich text and HTM. Uh, and then the, in terms of graphical output or images, uh, we uh, currently support it is the Windows meta file. Right, so um, assuming that, uh, let's say a, a user that has no experience uh, of building scripts uh, beforehand, uh, how, how to build one. So we've provided uh, uh, in the deployed uh, version of through in your machines, uh, there's a, there's the sample uh, folder there. So you can take a look at the Python and the BBA within Excel. So you can be get familiarized uh, of some of the syntax of those codes. But what are we doing here? So, so we need to build a script and, and the script needs to contain some information. First of all, to, uh, we need to summon through. We need to tell the machine, hey, um, um, bring me an instance, um, wake up, they take me take me to through. And that, that opens the software in the background. And then we need to input some logic in there as, as in to uh, once you've got it open, what do we do with it? So tentatively, most likely what you will like to do is uh, probably Change of the exist, change of the change uh, some of the existing parameters, or or, or modify uh, ground parameters, which is pretty standard in 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 our field in geotechnical engineering, because ground by definition it's intrinsically uh, uh, variable and and it's not just a, a, a single parameter to define, for example, stiffness. So you might want to assess a, a range of stiffnesses, and after we have that input, uh, uh, those input parameters, then we we use some of the com functionality to get some outputs. Uh, so we run the model and then and then with other logic, 
uh, that we put behind it. We want to do some post process uh, on, on, on that workflow and then we want to summon other com functions so we can plot, for example, the results in in tabular, tabular format or also in graphical format and then we close it. So that's that would be sort of a, 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 a train of thought or, or, or a workflow. If we do something a bit more advanced, uh, we start the same. We, sti we still need to summon through. And then we, we, as you can see, this cell replicates what we've been um, showing before. And then we, we can go, for example, into a, an iterative mode, as in uh, we in the previous in the previous slide or, or, or in this specific cell, we are we, we go from A to B in a straight line. Uh, what we want to do now, for example, is, is just change a specific parameter, but not just one time. We want to change it maybe 10, 20 times, as many times as we require. And then we, we can ask through to do that for us. And then with the open and save and run commands, uh, then we can iterate on a, on a range of values, for example, in soil stiffness. And we just created here a workflow in which we, we are uh, analyzing the sensitivity of our model, for example, to the variability of, of, uh, of soil stiffness. So to get you started, uh, to make things a bit easier, so uh, to get familiarized with the common interface and coding and, and the subsequent interaction between uh, your chosen platform, that is uh, if you use uh, Python, VBA or MATLAB, for example, and then through it's highly recommended to start working with a valid through model file that you know, one that you control, that you, you, you've, you've created all the valid parameters and, and, and you can run it. And then, the and then the, the next thing you want to do is be able to access that file, modify it, save it, and then um, and then um, through the common interface, and then and then still be happy with those results. For example, if you've halved the the stiffness of your material, then you, for example, you you, you could see uh, an increased amount of displacement uh, on, on the wall. So once you've you've got that step sorted, then the next thing you want to do is work with a base model. And a base model, um, maybe the probably the, the the way I, I envisage that is, is having, a, again, a valid through model that it um, has all the components inside, the ones that you're not going to be touching, and then you leave unpopulated fields, for example, like the materials or the and then the, the parameter materials or some of the struts, some of the stages, and then you have that sort of Canvas with all the all the uh, uh, all all the things you need in place that you're not going to be touching for that particular analysis, but then you leave blanks on those uh, spaces that you want to put input uh, using the com interface from outside, and then you do that, and that would be the next step in complexity. So yes, now showing you this in practice because one thing is the, the theory, the, another one is once once you get into, into it. I'm just going to be showing you a, 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 a common example using through, and in this case, I'm going to be showing a, a few um, a few steps uh, that we are going to be looking at. So uh, first of all, we are going to access a file and delete the previous existing results. Then we are going to um, change uh, query some of the model parameters and then modify them uh, those through through the common interface. We will reanalyze that original model and save it uh, in different extensions. In this case, uh, the original native FWD and also in, in JSON format. And I will explain the relevance of, of the second one. And then also we will print, we will try to print those results in various formats so you can uh, see how flexible uh, is uh, the options that we've got available using the, the common interface. So without further ado, I'm just going, uh, so I've, I'm going to present the examples uh, using uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, for those who are not familiar with this, is is part of the, pa the standard package that you can install through uh, the Anaconda environment, which is a is sort of a, a house uh, for all things Python, uh, and which can include other um, uh, functionalities and other packages. And uh, for example, I've got a, prefer a personal preference to use uh, Spider or the uh, Python uh, IDLE to, to create those scripts. And the Jupyter Notebook uh, is, um, is a functionality that allows uh, is going to allow me to walk you uh, through walk you through step by step uh, on the construction of a script with some commentary in it and then we will run different parts of that script so then we will see the results in in a, in a sequence it's a bit like going into debug mode like you know when you're uh, uh, fault finding uh, or, or or when you are trying to understand what you're doing with your model and, and you're happy with your results and then we will we will go sequentially through that 
So uh, the Jupyter Notebook uh, in this particular case uh, comes uh, when, when you click in that specific file, once it's been created uh, here, uh, it's a combination of text or a, of HTML text. And then you'll see these boxes in here, which require some input. And uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, I've created, uh, we are going to go through all those stages in which we are opening the file, deleting previous results and so forth. So the first thing we, we need to do here is, uh, as I mentioned, is, is uh, is summon that library, so we, we need we need to uh, import and and those that functionality, and and the way we do that is is by summoning uh, the the com types uh, client library. You can there's an, an alternative method which is the Win32 com that I've not I've not treated that in this particular example. So the first thing you want to do uh, is uh, to create uh, the object, the through object, and, and that basically uh, opens uh, opens through on the background. And then uh, we use uh, uh, just going to run that first cell. So as you see now, uh, we, we get a number uh, uh, once this cell has been run successfully. So by for, for creating that uh, through object, then what we do is, is go uh, and summon a particular target file. So in my case, in my in my machine, I, I've got a couple of um, through files, one saved in native format, another one in JSON. And then I've got an, another file in here, which is the output, which is currently empty, and we will see uh, the results that are coming through uh, once once they are. So I'm targeting uh, that particular file, and uh, just to make uh, life easy, if you've got uh, complicated uh, file names uh, in Python, you can use the R command at the front. So that, that just brings you, uh, allows you to not to repeat some of the symbology within. So I'm just going to run that cell, run that cell. And then the next thing we want to do is to delete the previous results because it was a, it was a, it was a model file that uh, contained uh, uh, previous results. So we are going to uh, do that as well right now. And again, it's just telling us that it, it's, it's gone successfully. So the next thing uh, we want to do, for example, is like, well, um, if, if you have inherited that file um, or you've created your file, it's like, oh, for example, how many, how many nodes has my model? How many stages? So you can query that through the com interface. And then I've added some functionality in here. I've, I've created a, a loop just to query how many uh, nodes we've got and then print, for example, the level uh, that uh, those uh, nodes have in the model. So then once you're aware of, uh, of that, then you can target those and then modify them accordingly in your subsequent models. So when I run that, there you go. I've just clicked uh, that and then it tells me that uh, our level uh, at node one, it's uh, at 50 meters AOD. In that particular model and it runs the whole our model has that certain amount of nodes and and these at these elevations and it's also telling me that through has a total of uh, 12 model stages and as mentioned earlier uh, it's a zero based uh, so uh, our first one is zero and ends at, at number 11 that's important once we uh, analyze the, the file so some other uh, things we want to do is not just uh, getting that number of struts, which we recall with this function, the get num struts, uh, then we can access uh, based on the nodes and then modify uh, original parameters. So I'm just going, uh, uh, and then we are going to do that. So the original value was 200, and, and then the, we, we are changing that to 300. And just for uh, awareness in there, I'm just going to open that in here. So as you can see, uh, my strut properties, it's got a level of 200, uh, 200 sorry, a level, a pre-stress of 200 kilonewtons per meter on, on our first uh, first strut, which is uh, indented on, on, on index zero. Right, so we are going to run that cell in there and uh, printing this text just tells us also that uh, that has been done successfully. Next thing we want to do, for example, is as I mentioned, is we changed, uh, we can change or, or we can reduce uh, the the stiffness of, of our uh, our system, and we I do that in an iterative manner, and then I'm going to change uh, the original values of that file that were 60,000, 50,000, and 40,000 for the three existing materials, and I'm going to reduce that by half and then rerun the model. And as you can see, it's also, uh, I've recalled the name of those materials, and then also uh, we we are declaring what's the, that uh, irref, so that Young's modulus value. So next thing we want to do is analyze. I've used the value 11 because I want to run up to, uh, up to stage 11, starting from zero, and I'm saving uh, in the output uh, folder uh, that file uh, in the native format. I've called it uh, from a new and the same with the JSON file. 
and I can just open that from here. So you can see they've just been created at the same time on the clock. And then we also get the next thing we want to do is uh, to reduce and to check that that it's it's that it's been that the case. So there we go. Uh, uh, the, those values have been have been executed, and then we would have a, a change in our in our in our output. Now, one way of uh, one way, for example, of being in control of, of the output as well, we can print those results on screen. And I'm just going to run that cell in here. And what I'm doing is uh, for each iteration and for e and for each stage, uh, for every single node, I'm, I'm extracting the displacement, the bending moments, and the shear forces. So well, the, we've got a nice database in here, pretty lengthy. So uh, we, that's that's that would be the verbatim you would you would need to extract that information. But uh, lucky for all of us, uh, our dev team have have have. Uh, done uh, uh, a nice job in here, and we can straight away get those CSV files. Like you would do in Fru normally, you would just uh, you would just uh, save that file CSV. You can also do it per stages, and then we can also create um, the um, the graphical outputs. So I'm just going to run those three there, and that's the verbatim that we use for those three particular cases. And then uh, reopening that output file, as you can see now in here, I've got all the information I need for my model. Just go, I'm going to open one of these files and here you can select. You can select as many quantities, so it might get a bit crowded if you select everything, which is what I've done, uh, but you, you are in control in the code uh, as to how many variables. Uh, so if the displacements, bending and shear forces, uh, you can select true or false if, if you want to print them or not. That's all explained in the documentation. And just for good practice, we can uh, close uh, the, the through object um, um, yeah, the through object, uh, we can close the model and then and clear the, the variable space. And that would be the case. And that printing success at the bottom, uh, it just tells us that all has run according to plan. So I'm just going to leave that there for a second. I'm just going to go back to the presentation. So what's the JSON file format? Um, It's an open standard file and data interchange format, so it's a, it's another way of, of accessing the model data and the results, uh, which is uh, uh, an alternative uh, to to look into into our models and to our data. And but by making it transparent, is is a file which is non-binary. So so when you access like a text file, and I'll just show you one one in a in, in a minute, um, and then you can with the com functions and, and once you know the coding from Python or MATLAB or VBA, you can access those, JS those JSON files, modify them and then save them and rerun them. And, uh, and again, it's just a different way of accessing the, the same functionality. And why would you use it? it is, it's got that transparency and also it saves you time uh, and, and transfer the uh, that the transfer that data process and you can embed this in your in your existing uh, automation and, and, and workflows. So there's a few ways you can uh, access uh, 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 or know more about the JSON file. So for example, uh, there's the uh, an online version of this is uh, is this JSON formatter uh, option, which I'll show in a second, and then we will upload the file and take a look at it. Uh, my personal preference at the moment is uh, I use uh, instead of um, Notepad, I use a, a Notepad++, which is uh, got a bit more functionality. And one of the plugins is about JSON, and it's got a JSON viewer on one side, and then it allows us uh, to compress or uncompress the JSON so we can make it readable and then uh, that's the difference between uh, the left one uh, left one side and the right hand side is if it's been formatted or not it also has an impact on memory so uh, the the condensed version of it, it, it it's 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 a reduced it, it it's less heavy let's say uh, in in terms of storage in your machines so I'm just going to show that uh, from the browser so uh, in uh, this is the the website the jsonformatter.org uh, it's it's on, on 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 the presentation is as simple as uploading your data you can upload a url of an existing website or you can also upload from your machine so i'm going to the second and the way we do this i'm just going to open the file for example this one in there takes a little bit and off you go so that's our uh, unformatted uh, json and then on the side, we've got something that we can read easily. And then we access it uh, in a nested structure, for example, under Oasis header, we've got program title and titles and bitmap, under JSON schema, we've got major uh, version, minor version, and so forth. 
and then you can uh, you can also select uh, things like um, you can filter out you, you can uh, find out where where for example some of your parameters are stored and my personal preference as i mentioned is the notepad plus plus and uh, you can access a, a file through uh, the the plugins you need to install that in your machine and if i open uh, a file so let's just go back to the same one So again, that's uh, that's a bit, at least for myself, it's that's a bit difficult to read. So first thing we want to do is using the plugin, we go to JSON viewer and show the JSON viewer. So it summarizes on the site, just clicking on the nested structure, all the information we've got. For example, and it always is header from title through, and then okay, to make that a bit more readable, we just click there and format JSON, and then in a matter of seconds we are in our file, and then we can start editing or plan our editing. So that's it. Um, uh, I think, uh, yes, we we can, uh, if you allow me briefly, I'll just show you uh, one of the, another or node put in here uh, with the use of the JSON, uh, uh, the JSON file structure. So what we are doing um, is, is a bit similarly to, to what we are doing with the previous file. We are going to import uh, uh, the functionality of the com interface. We are going to target uh, a JSON file, uh, which is the one I had in that folder I showed previously. We are going to open it and, and then start querying things about that file in terms of units and materials, which I have selected, but you can do with any of those subfolders. And then we are going to go into the different indents. And then at the end of it, we are going to modi modify those and then check the, the changes. So just again, by running that particular, uh, we are opening the, uh, we are importing the com library. Then, as you can see, just by clicking on that verbatim in here, we've got part of that JSON, and it's it's non-structured. I mean, it's structured, but it's not show. It's showing all the information contained within units and materials. And then it's a bit complicated to read, and then we can target easily parts of that script, and there we go. So not just the units. We want stress units, for example, and then it's just telling us that the unit is Pascal's for the solver, and the display unit is KPA. That's what's uh, used in within the in through interface. And then I've checked uh, what's the uh, the first uh, of our three materials uh, with the index of zero, and I'm checking the name and also the uh, in pa in in yeah in in Pascal what, what's the what's the stiffness of the material, which is 60 MPa. And then what we want to do, for example, is, is even go farther. So we went another level because we had two levels in there. We go for uh, what's the display unit. So last thing, we create a new file, a new JSON file, and we go into it and we want to modify that original display unit and we change into megapascals. And then we, I'm making sure that has happened. And then the same with the name. So in the original JSON file, it, it had the, uh, glacial till and drained. I've changed it to new glacial till and I've halved that target value. And just very quickly to show you the difference between those two files, I'm just going to be an, opening an existing file, which is in there. So our original uh, JSON is in here. So you can see glacial till drained and then it's a, it's a um, sorry, glacial till and drained with a 60 MPA value. And then uh, if we go to units, uh, it's telling us that it was KPA and I'm just going to close that file and I'm just going to reopen the new file we've just created. And it's changed the units and there you go, it's 30,000 30, in there and we are the stress now it's in MPA. So nice and easy. That's easier said than done, but the, it's just to give you a flavor of, of, of what level of interaction you can have with with through going forward if, if you take that, that path. Um, yeah. So that brings uh, brings me to the end of what I wanted to present to you today. That was great. Um, thank you, Raul and Cicera. And now Actually, we have seven minutes, so if we have a quick look at the questions. Um, actually, as you were just talking about the coming uh, interface, um, if I just start with something related to that, um, can you provide context as to when to apply or use the coming interface? 
Um, also connected to this question is, I have no previous experience in coding scripting, so how long will it take uh, for me to learn the basics? Can take that one. Um, 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 I've been uh, right. So uh, I guess the answer is 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 <laughs> maybe with another question. Uh, it, it depends, really. Um, I mean, it, it's it, it depends on how fluent if you've used uh, previous codes before or if you have no experience at all. Um, I I've been um, a MATLAB user uh, for a, for a few years during my in my studies, but that's what was uh, about about 10 years ago uh, and I've been uh, also then uh, having some um, training on Python and, and, and also Visual Basic. It, it, it might be a matter of days, might be uh, um, maybe a bit longer if you want to um, um, uh, to get into things, but we've made your life easier uh, in the sense that uh, it, it's, it's very well explained uh, and it's well declared what those functionalities uh, do and, and how it works in, in, in the documentation. So, so, so using the sample files we've, we've provided too, uh, that gives you like a, like a, like a, like a starting point uh, where to build up your, your confidence. Uh, and I, I wouldn't do too many things at, at a time, uh, like uh, in sensitivity analysis, we, we try to get one parameter at a time, understand the changes. So uh, I'd say that's the philosophy. Yeah, just, um, just take it easy. But uh, even if it's a steep learning curve at the beginning, the advantages uh, are far superior uh, than the, that the original you know, investment in time on, on how to use this. Uh, so uh, all positives uh, I can see. Thanks. Brilliant. Um, actually, another question related to Python. Um, um, do you have any suggestions for Python libraries that would work well with the outputs uh, from Fru? Um, I tend to use uh, NumPy and pandas to manage .csv uh, output data. Are there any other you have come across that you would recommend? Uh, again, uh, maybe I can take that one. Uh, I maybe can uh, the, the team can also uh, uh, corroborate or, or mention more. Those are the ones I, I use myself, and I, I still need. I'm building my my, my confidence on on those ones. Uh, NumPy for me, uh, uh, um, and then Mat Mat Matplotlib as well. Um, it brings me back a bit of, of, of that matrix uh, um, alignment or matrix uh, storage of information that I, I, I recall from MATLAB. So that's that that would be my my first port of call. Thanks. OK, thank you. Um, when is drained undrained analysis relevant to be carried out? That one for you, Cecilia, I think. OK, uh, drained and drained analysis is often required when uh, we encounter soils which are uh, to be considered undrained in the in the beginning stage and then it will be in the long term it will be drained, but in the undrained condition, uh, which is clay type of soil. If you encounter clay type of soil, most of the time we would need to do a drained and drained analysis. OK, um, then moving on to the next one. What are the assumptions made by Oasis through in analysis of shaft excavations? OK, uh, in the analysis of uh, uh, shaft, the in infro, we are assuming uh, that the Young's modulus is not varying with depth. Uh, and also that we are assuming an infinitely long excavation. There are other uh, theory and uh, details mentioned in the user manual. Uh, the user may please refer to that before modeling shafts. I hope that's clear. Yes, and then um, are the results of integral bridge analysis by FRU comparable to other methods? Uh, hello, yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, I'm Vikram. Yeah, hello, uh, Norbert. Yeah, uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, OK, yeah. Uh, actually, it, uh, based on uh, experiments which were carried out, uh, that theory came out, that PD6694 standard came out. So in FRU, uh, the similar uh, methodology has been adopted. So in terms of uh, experiment, I think it's reasonably close. But when you are uh, referring to other methods of analysis, like using uh, proper 2D, FE, etc., even then, I think the results are uh, reasonably close. 
Brilliant, thank you. Um, and another question, does the, uh, the com interface allow multiple users to access single license of free at one point of time? That's one for you, Vikram. Uh, actually, that is, I think it's supposed not to allow because it's on a per user basis. It depends on what type of license they have. So uh, generally, if it's a single license, I don't think uh, multiple users can be uh, running multiple instances of Fru, but uh, the single user can run uh, multiple instances of Fru. OK, brilliant. Um, does anyone have any further questions? You can actually un unmute yourself if you if you want to ask anything. OK, um, while I see Michelle is sending another question. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone for attending. Um, if you have any further questions, um, you can just send these to oasis at arab.com. And um, in the meanwhile, thank you for attending. And um, yes, uh, you, can, you can put any further questions in into the chat and we can uh, reply to these uh, later on. Okay, thank you for the time being and goodbye.